Tonight, Apple announces new iPads and more. Google disappoints Wall Street. And what is CBS All Access? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 195 for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. Happy birthday to my cousin, Jill. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter, which makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and we'll be chatting about the Big Apple event with Venture Beats to Vinda Hardware in just a few moments. But first, let's hit today's tech feed. Yesterday, we told you that HBO announced plans to sell web video subscriptions, which would be unbundled from cable packages for the first time next year. Now, CBS is joining in, in some form anyway, with its own plan to let users watch almost any show that it airs live or on demand on a variety of devices for $6 per month on something called CBS All Access, which starts today. Now, the big difference between something like CBS is offering and HBO is that CBS programming is already available for free, at least live, to anybody with a broadcast antenna. But so are many of the shows on Hulu, which of course is the service powered by CBS competitors Fox, NBC, and ABC. And it sheds a little bit more light on why CBS might have sued Aereo, since CBS All Access will let viewers stream shows live to phones and tablets and computers just like Aereo wanted to. A few drawbacks, though. The service won't show the NFL games that it broadcasts on Sunday afternoons and Thursday nights live because it doesn't have those streaming rights. And for now, CBS will only live stream shows in the 14 cities where CBS actually owns the local CBS station. That includes New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Will you pay $6 a month? Let us know. Google announced its third quarter earnings today after the stock market closed. And although the company's revenue increased 20% from this period last year, the cost per click, which is the average price that Google gets paid every time you click on an ad, was down 2% compared with the quarter a year ago and has been flat since the second quarter of this year. Mobile devices like phones and tablets probably play some part in this. Smaller screens are harder places to display ads and get people to click on them. Although Google doesn't separate more mobile ad revenue out from desktop ad revenue. The company has expanded beyond its core search business, obviously, but many investors agree that nothing has quite been as profitable as that original search model, which is now changing. Net income in the last quarter was $2.81 billion. That was down from $2.97 billion. Google stock was down as much as 5% in after-hours trading, although it went back up to about uh, 2% down. Google isn't in trouble here. Its cash on hand sits at about $62.16 billion. The company is profitable, lots of money. The company also now employs 55,030 people full-time, which is also up from Q2. It was 52,069. Today, The Guardian published an expose of sorts on the startup behind the app Whisper, which allows people to anonymously post secrets and has millions of users. This is kind of an interesting story. The Guardian alleges that the company tracks location data for some of its users, knows where they are, even if they've turned off a geolocation feature, stores data indefinitely, and even shares some data with the Department of Defense. Now, Whisper denies following or tracking users, says monitoring people without their consent is a breach of its own terms of service, and that The Guardian has published a lot of false statements. Now, The Guardian claims that on Monday, so that's four days ago, and four days after learning that The Guardian was about to publish this story, The Guardian alleges that Whisper rewrote its terms of service. They now explicitly permit the company to establish the broad location of people who have disabled the geolocation feature and also warn users that turning off that app's geolocation feature may, quote, allow others over time to make a determination as to your identity. Interesting story, which we will definitely be keeping tabs on as it unfolds.
Microsoft has started rolling out the Xbox One October update, which includes a new Snap Center, gives you quicker access to friends and messages and game DVR and the clock and even a battery indicator. New Snap apps are easier to open during gameplay. The Friends Snap app, Achievements app, and Messages Snap app have all been improved. On the media player side, DLNA and MKV, if you haven't heard of it, it's a high-def video standard, are now supported in the media player app. For markets where one guide is available, a new mini guide on the bottom of the screen will show you details about what's currently playing on the TV. Microsoft also announced that later this month, if you haven't set up your security information already, the Xbox One will ask you to provide an alternate email address or mobile phone number to use if you ever need your password reset. Security is kind of a big thing these days. Now, in just a few minutes, the TwitPix saga continues to unfold. What has become of the former Twitter photo service? And up next, we'll chat with VentureBeats to Venture Hardware about Apple's iPad announcement, which included quite a few other announcements. But first, let's take a moment to thank ZipRecruiter for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Okay, maybe you're in a hiring spree. Things are looking up. The economy's booming. You need qualified, awesome people to join your team. So where do you post your job? Do you post to be Craigslist or LinkedIn or you know you, you start tweeting about it? What you should do is post your job to a bunch of places. One place isn't enough to find quality candidates because you don't know where they're checking. With ZipRecruiter, that's exactly what you get. You can post your job once and it'll go out to over 50 job sites all with one single click. It makes your job a lot easier. You can find candidates in any city, any industry, all over the nation. You can just post once and watch those candidates start to roll in through ZipRecruiter's interface. They do all the work for you, all organizing. You don't have to worry about back and forth emails. You can screen candidates, you can rate them, and you can hire the right person as quickly as possible. If you're looking for a job, ZipRecruiter also helps you find your new employer as much as the reverse. You can have the newest job postings that are available sent to your inbox every day and be totally on top of it and be the first one with your amazing resume in there and get hired. This is great for employees and potential candidates. You'll learn about your new postings quickly and get the most motivated candidates this way. So ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses and can be used by you as well. Right now, our listeners and viewers can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for the support of our show. Joining us now is Devendra Hardawar, Senior Editor and Mobile and Reviews Lead at VentureBeat. Hello, Devendra. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. All right. So were you up early, excited about Apple's announcement, just one month after Apple's announcement? It September and like, October have kind of turned into an Apple yeah. slog, haven't they? Yeah, I feel like we were all here before. I was doing <laughs> the same thing with my writers last month. So yeah. it was uh, it's crazy. It's a whole planning process. Now, as expected, we got new iPad announcements. No big iPad. No 12.9 inch iPad that was sort mm -hmm. of rumored to be happening and then rumored to be delayed. Either way, did not hear about that. But as for the mm -hmm. new iPads, we've got the Air 2, the Mini 3, thinner, faster. We've got a, a gold air uh, option. Mm -hmm. And actually something that I thought was kind of interesting that Apple never talked about on stage, that the new cellular iPads will have a new Apple SIM, at least in the mm -hmm. US and the UK, for multi-carriers. Now that's kind of interesting. Why don't you think Apple talked about that at all? I, it may be, it may have been a little too technical. This was mm. a really weird event because it felt like uh, they were just rushing through everything. Uh, you know, the iPad, the new iPad mini didn't even get any screen time. They were, it was just kind of offhanded. Oh, by the way, here's an iPad mini three. Yeah, it, you know, to the point, I almost thought that they didn't update it at all because it was yeah. such a strange little mention. And they didn't really update it. All it has is the touch ID. That's mm. it. The specs and everything are the same as last, uh, the iPad mini 2, as they're calling it now. Which leads you, you know, it, you'd almost have a hard time recommending the mini 3 unless somebody had yeah. their heart set on Touch ID because the mini 2 is $100 cheaper. Yeah, it's it's confusing. I don't I don't quite know what's going on. It's really weird, too, because last year, the iPad Air and the iPad, uh, last year's iPad mini were spec uh, pretty much compatible. Like, they were the same. Uh, so it's very strange, uh, but hey... Uh, Apple's loss is your gain. Go get the iPad mini 2 now and, you know, save a hundred bucks. Right. Now, as far <laughs> as an iPad event, it was, I wouldn't even say completely focused on iPads. We also got, um, as some had predicted, um, an iMac a Retina display, which is technically 5K rather than 4K, uh, going for about $2,500. 
Now, we, we had a little bit of a debate because Twit was following the event live and, 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 and doing our own commentary that it seemed sort of odd to have something um, in the iMac line that had such a powerful display, which would probably be focused on power users but not, you know, it, it's not a Mac Pro. It's not a display that you can that that you can um, uh, tether to whatever powerful system you're already running. Who do you think this is for? It's very confusing, isn't it? Um, I think, you know, it's if you can afford a computer like this, and you're a video producer or somebody working in content who wants to create uh, 4K media or edit 4K files and do things with something at that high resolution. I think it's a really interesting computer because. Um, you know, typical 4K display right now on its own will cost you between 2000 and 3000 bucks, And that's not including, you know, the price for the hardware and, you know, just having a machine that can actually handle all that stuff. So it's a really interesting all-in-one machine. Uh, it just kind of fits a weird place of like the, uh, I don't know, the 4K producer who doesn't quite need everything that a Mac Pro has. But, you know, I think this is half the price of a Mac Pro in a separate 4K display. So there's definitely some value there. It may not be totally apparent uh, immediately, though. When the official uh, invitations went out to the press from Apple, uh, there was a, you know, they, Apple tends to tease people uh, with, with, with some sort of a line that alludes to what is going to be announced. Uh, mm -hmm. This, uh, for this particular event, it was that it has been way too long. <laughs> now, we did hear about an updated Mac Mini, do you think that that was the way too long? I, I found that a little confusing, but it has been a long time since the Mac Mini was updated. I almost, I feel like that was a, uh, that felt like a sarcastic uh, invite because uh -huh. you know, it's like, I haven't seen you in a while. Okay. You know, something <laughs> like that because uh, the, the iMacs, we first saw these uh, ultra thin iMacs come in 2012. Um, the iMac is a pretty popular computer for Apple. So, you know, maybe they were referring to that, but I think they were just being kind of tongue in cheek. We heard that Apple Pay uh, will be available starting this Monday, October 20th. Uh, Apple also announced that 500 more banks have signed up since they're already pretty impressive uh, lineup of, of partners. What do you think about Apple Pay? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about it. Obviously, no one's used it yet, but it does seem like Apple has been very busy securing partnerships before this goes live. Yeah, it's really interesting because I've been covering mobile payments for years now uh, through uh, PayPal and Square, a whole bunch of companies trying to do this. And what Apple has built just seems to be the most uh, robust attempt at true mobile payments. You know, uh, you have a secure mechanism on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus uh, that can actually store uh, your credit card and debit card and all this other information. You have partnerships with stores and a lot of stores, not just a couple. Uh, I think PayPal started with like deals with Home Depot and some smaller chains. But Apple has just like uh, they've introduced this at a point where uh, the stores are ready for contactless payments and the banks are ready to participate. NFC is kind of there as a technology. So it's a, it feels like a perfect storm. You know, it's one of the things Apple does really well, right? They're not the first to do this, uh, but they may be the ones to do it uh, the most elegantly. And I'm on, I'm excited to try it out because uh, I can imagine going out for a run and actually being able to buy things if I needed to on the way rather than just being stranded without cash or credit cards or something. Uh, it seems really cool. And uh, I also really like the Touch ID being used for in-app purchases too. Uh, the Amazon app currently does that on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, and that is so dangerous. It is, it's so easy to just waste a lot of money with a fingerprint. Well, and I think that that was one of the questions that people had was, well, yeah, I mean, you're going to take your iPad to the cafe. I mean, that doesn't make a right, lot of sense. Right. But hey, sitting back on the couch, buying things online with participating apps makes a lot of sense and frankly, frightens me a little bit. It's insidious. Yeah, <laughs> it is so convenient, but it is so terribly dangerous. Now, on the hardware side, uh, there are a couple of things that weren't mentioned. Obviously, that larger iPad did not get any uh, did not get any uh, stage time, nor did really anything about Beats. Tiny little mention mm -hmm. off the top of the show. No yeah. mention of the Apple TV as well. I know that there were some folks that were perhaps just hoping that the Apple TV would get an update. Was there anything that was not talked about that surprised you? Um, I mean, I maybe I was expecting more from the Apple TV. I'm surprised that. Apple just kind of rushed through this, right? Uh, a lot of the presentation was uh, kind of devoted to features we heard about uh, mm -hmm. months ago. Um, the and a lot of Yosemite, jokes, too. A lot of jokes. Uh, the whole, like, uh, Stephen Colbert thing, it, it was kind of cute, but it was ultimately 
not very relevant to what mm. Apple was doing. Uh, there was a whole video of like uh, Apple executives with this crazy hand gesture. It's really cute. Um, it just feels un Apple in a way. It felt really like they were wasting our time a little. Uh, the, the Yosemite part of the presentation, total rehash of stuff we've seen before. Uh, the iOS 8 thing, same deal. Uh, we saw very little about what's in iOS 8.1. We saw a lot more about what was in iOS 8, and we heard all that last month. So it was surprising how much time Apple devoted to things we've already heard and how little time it devoted to the newer thing. So I wanted to hear more about how that new iMac worked um, or about the iPad mini or you know something else, something new. Apple Pay is really, that, that has the potential to be transformational, and they haven't really talked much about what that really means or how you're going to use it. So I'm surprised by the stuff they actually focused on. It was really weird. Of the stuff that they did focus on, mm -hmm. are you purchasing any of it? Uh, personally, uh, I mean, the new iPad Air 2 is really tempting. It's just so thin. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of like attempts to bend it because it's so thin and that's <laughs> the whole bend gate thing from the iPhone 6. Um, you know, it's a, I haven't been a fan of huge tablets just because they've generally been very... Uh, They've been kind of tough to hold. They've been kind of bulky. And I've really liked small tablets, but I think the iPad Air was the first big one that I've really liked just because it was very light. It was about a pound. So the fact that they made that thinner, that's tempting. I may check that out. And the new Retina iMac, um, I personally won't buy it, but I would love for my job to get it for me at some point. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's a great work computer to uh, to request. Yeah, it's kind of how I feel about that too. Somebody, right. somebody, just get get it in here so I can take a look yeah, at you it. You need it. I don't You're a need video producer. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's research. Mm -hmm. Devinder yeah. Hardware is the senior editor and mobile and reviews lead over at VentureBeat. Thanks so much for joining us. And before you go, uh, remind folks where they can read your work. Oh, yeah. You can find me at VentureBeat.com. And I'm also on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Devendra. And you also do a movie podcast. I do. Yeah. At uh, SlashFilm.com, I review movies every week. I've been doing that for over six years now. It's pretty crazy, but I love it. It's fun. Excellent. Well, read his movie reviews as well. Devendra, I hope you come back on TN2 very soon. Thanks for having me. All right. Finally, TwitPick. TwitPick is dead again. If you don't remember how this saga has been unfolding, the company originally announced that it was shutting down due to a trademark complaint from Twitter itself. Then the company claimed via a tweet on September 18th that it had indeed been acquired by a company that it had not named, but it sounded like TwitPick would be saved. Today, the company announced that it did not, in fact, get acquired. Some terms were not agreed to. So the service is really for reals shutting down on October 25th. As a user, if you still need to export your photos, you have until the 25th, at which point they will be gone for good. RIP Twitbick, you were there from the beginning and I'm sorry to see you go. And on that happy note, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. If you like the show, subscribe and then you get it automatically unless you're watching live of course and if, in that case hello you can write us at tn2 at twit.tv and you can watch our morning news program here on twit that's called tech news today it's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern we'll be back here at 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern i'm sarah lane thanks for watching bandwidth for tech news tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com